Tusote tulilinde, tuajibike, tulimarike, umoja wetu inguzo yetu, idu mujumu ia yetu. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you very much. Please take your seats. I will invite Alice uh, to give us a short opening prayer, and then we will start this occasion. Thank you very much. Let's pray. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you for this annual press brief. Father Lord, we commit it into your hands, and uh, we pray for everyone that is in this room. And Lord, we thank you for Uganda Revenue Authority that your will be done in this organization. We give you praise, we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Alice. Powerful. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you officially to Uganda Revenue Authority, but also welcome you in a special way to the virtual online press conference for 2020-2021 financial year. I would like to thank all those that have joined us online. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live on URA TV, both on YouTube and Zoom, but also we are graciously joined by BBS Telefina and Soul TV that are projecting this occasion live to their viewers would like to thank you for accepting to join us online. We will be able to pick your questions and feedback if you're online. We'll be able to pick that feedback when the time comes for the Q&A session and we'll present those questions to the commissioners that are here. As I said, tonight or today is such a very special day because it's a day when we avail or reveal how we have been able to perform for the last 12 months that started in June last year and ended in July, that ended in June this year. We'd like also to inform you that uh, we have, we, with us we have all the commissioners of Uganda Revenue Authority that form top management of the institution. We have the Commissioner Corporate Services, Richard Carissa is with us, of the Commissioner Legal Services Border Affairs, Patience T. Lubagumia. We have the Commissioner Domestic Taxes, Mr. James Odong. We have the Commissioner Customs, Mr. Abel Kagumili. We have the Commissioner Tax Investigations, Madam Agnes Nawire. We have the Commissioner Internal Audit, Mr. Rusoke Hubbard. So all the top guns are here. And when it's time for Q&A session, we request all media houses to go to that microphone. You state your name. I pray that we are organized. You state your name, the media house you work for. Stick your question to the revenue performance or to the statement that the Commissioner General would have made in this room. The other questions will come after the press brief because we are live on different TV stations, and we are mindful of the time that we spend, because every time, every minute, every second is paid for, and it is a cost to us and to the taxpayer. But with that, I would like also to inform the media houses that I will be inviting the Commissioner General to make his statement where I'm standing right now. So I know that if you have a camera, it should be able to be changing positioning if you want that to capture that moment, I will be inviting the Commissioner General to make his statement where I'm standing, and then for the Q&A session, he will be able to go back to his seat and we'll have the Q&A session there. Mr. Commissioner General, it's my pleasure, sir, to invite you to make your statement to Ugandans. I want to thank you, sir. Asante sana.
Uh, colleague members of senior management, Uganda Revenue Authority present here, uh, members of the media houses, all the official from the Ministry of Finance, all our esteemed listeners and taxpayers who are following us live on the different media houses and platforms. And to all Ugandans, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me start by thanking God for the opportunity of gathering us here today for the media briefing on the performance on the revenue performance for the financial year 2020-21 and welcome all of you who have made it uh, to this hall, especially members of the media houses and also our listeners who are following us on television and other online platforms. As URA, we condole and stand with all Ugandans who have lost their loved ones during this very difficult time of the COVID-19 pandemic. And in particular, we commiserate with the business community who in recent times have lost very key leaders namely the late Gideon Badagawa, the former ED of PSFU, and the late Evaristo Kayondo, the former chairman of Casita, Uganda. These two leaders provided stewardship of the business community during very difficult time, and we remember them as we close this financial year. But I'm also sure that there is no family, no company, no institution that has not been affected or have not lost a loved one to this terrible pandemic of COVID-19. Therefore, I'd like to request that we take a moment of silence in respect and remembrance of all those departed souls. May we stand up and take a moment of silence. May their souls rest in eternal peace. Amen. Thank you. You can take your seats. In this press conference, we will focus on the performance for the financial year 2020-2021, the factors behind the performance and the outlook for the new financial year 2021-22. We will also take this opportunity to announce that Uganda Revenue Authority will be celebrating 30 years of existence uh, on the 15th of September this year, 2021. Starting with the performance overview. In the financial year 2020-21, URIA collected a net revenue of 19 Point two six three trillion and posted a growth in revenue of fourteen point nine nine per cent in comparison to the financial year twenty nineteen twenty twenty. This reflects to an estimated tax to GDP ratio of 12.99% 
And in real terms, it reflects a growth in revenue of 2.511 trillion and a growth in the tax to GDP ratio of almost 1%. Now, this is the highest growth registered in the last four years. And I don't know whether we have a projector that is projecting this presentation. I would request that this is projected to demonstrate this growth on the graph. As the IT team sorts out that, I will continue with my presentation. It should, however, be noted that the outturn for the financial year 2020-2021 is short of the target by Uganda shillings, 2.375 trillion. I would like you to, if you're able to project now, to go to the first figure that talks about the revenue collection for the last four years. Okay. The first figure in my press brief. Is it that one? Revenue collection, yes, then improve the resolution. Okay, so let's continue uh, when the team is ready to project the right graph, I'll come back to it. So I was saying that the outturn for the financial year 2020-2021 is still short of the target for the financial year, which was 21.638 trillion by about 2.375 trillion. It is important to note that this target was set and approved by Parliament before the impact of COVID-19. Therefore, the macroeconomic variables that affect revenue collection, such as the GDP growth, were projected at 6%, yet at the end of the financial year, the GDP growth was only 3% after the COVID-19 disruption. I would have loved to show the next graph, but I think we still have challenges with the projection, which shows the revenue collection of 19.2 trillion against the target of 21.6 trillion. Now, the domestic revenue performance. Domestic revenue collections for the financial year 2020-2021 were 12.14 trillion, registering a growth of 13.71% and in real terms, 1.464 trillion. This is in comparison with the financial year 2019-2020. However, these collections were below the set target by 
8.94 trillion. The breakdown of the domestic revenues, PE contributed 3.109 trillion. Value added tax contributed 2.99 trillion. Corporate tax contributed 1.567 trillion. Local excise duty contributed 1.479 trillion. Withholding tax contributed 1.118 uh, trillion. And the other taxes like presumptive tax, withholding tax, uh, tax on bank interest, treasury bills, casino tax, individual income tax, all together, and the non-tax revenue, all together contributed 1.875 trillion. Customs revenue performance. For the financial year 2020-2021, customs revenue collections were 7.505 trillion against the target of 8.001 trillion, registering a significant growth of 16.43%, uh, which in real terms is 1 trillion, 0 five nine above target. And this is in comparison with the financial year 2019-2020. However, again, these collections were below target by 495.5 billion. The breakdown of the customs revenues, but on imports contributed 2.83 trillion, petroleum duty contributed 2.45 trillion, import duty contributed 1.43.403 trillion, and all the other small taxes like temporary load licenses, infrastructure levy, hides and skins levy, and uh, withholding tax and excise duty altogether contributed 816 billion. Sector contributions to revenue, out of these collections, 71% of the revenue was generated from the top four sectors. These are wholesale and retail trade, which had the biggest contribution that amounted to 5.783 trillion, approximately 29.4%. The manufacturing sector followed with a contribution of 4.46 trillion, approximately 22.7%. The information and communication sector contributed 2.059 trillion, which is approximately 10.5%. While 1.64 trillion, approximately 9.4% was generated from the financial and insurance service sector. There was a growth in revenue from the key sectors, especially manufacturing, which registered a growth of 27.5%. Information and communication technology. Oh, finally, the graph is here. So I will step back into my presentation. Let me just finish this point and then I'll step back. So the, the, the I was talking about revenue growth from the different sectors, manufacturing, registered a growth of 27.5%. So man, the government policy of manufacturing and uh, import substitution is beginning to pay off because uh, previously uh, the growth in manufacturing has not been this good. And then information and communication technology 
also on registered a growth of 25.7 percent wholesale and retail a growth of 19.13 percent and then financial and insurance services a smaller growth of 5.55 percent but on the other hand there was a decline in revenue collection from some of the sectors in the financial year 2020-2021 compared to 2019 and 2020 Particularly revenue from accommodation and food services activities declined by 37.38%, the education sector by 10.35%, arts, entertainment, and recreation by 31.39%. And of course, this is for the obvious reason of the economic slowdown in this particular sectors as a result of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Now, let's quickly look at this. This is the first figure I referred to about the revenue performance over the last four years. The, the resolution is still a bit faint, but maybe if that is the best it can be, as you realize, in the year 17, 19, uh, we, we had a growth of about 1.73 trillion. I don't know why the figures are not showing, but the revenue collected then was about 14.5. If you read from the graph, 14.5 trillion. The left-hand side should have been having revenue figures. And then the growth, the growth here we are talking about year-to-year -year growth. So the previous year, what is the improvement in the next financial year? So the improvement then was 1.7 trillion. Next, the collection was about 16.6 trillion. But the year-to-year -year growth was 2.16 trillion. And then the year 2019-2020, there was almost no growth. The growth was less than 1%. It was 0 0.81, uh, although the collection was 16.7. This is just the year before the one we are reporting on. But this financial year, 2020, 2021, in spite the difficult environment created by the pandemic, we were able to grow revenue by 2.5 trillion, which is the biggest orange bar. The actual figure there is 2.510. The growth, and in terms of percentage, the percentage growth is what is indicated there, 14. 0.99, and that is commendable performance uh, in terms of revenue improvement. I think in the interest of time, I will not refer to the other graphs that we missed because I read out the figures in detail, and I hope everybody will have a print copy of this brief. Uh, let me now look at the regional comparison how can we know how we are performing in terms of revenue unless we compare ourselves with our neighbors and those involved in the same activity like we are? So in regard to the EAC region, URA has registered the highest year-on-year -year revenue growth. Again, the figure is 14.99%. Revenue collection for the same period, financial year 2020-2021, was less than the, what they collected in the financial year 2019-2020, by 0.1%. Okay, that is the small bar indicated there, and the percentage under TRA is negative, 0.1%. The next is Rwanda Revenue Authority, RRR, which registered a growth of 9%. 
The next OBR is the Burundi Revenue Authority, which registered a growth of 11.7%. And then KRA, Kenya Revenue Authority, registered a growth of 3.9%. So Uganda Revenue Authority, uh, as indicated on that bar, has the highest growth of 14.99. Of However, It should also be noted that some of these countries indicated, uh, Kenya in particular, Burundi and Rwanda, met their revenue targets for the financial year 2020-2021, but their targets were based on the COVID-19 impact. So whereas in Uganda, we went with a pre-COVID target of collection of 21.6 for these revenue agencies on the onset of COVID-19, which started around the beginning of last year, they were able to adjust their targets, uh, taking into consideration the impact of COVID-19. Let me now quickly look at the reasons for this performance. The significant growth of 14.99% in revenue collection can be explained by the following. One, debt recovery. In this financial year, we were able to collect 1.024 trillion, mainly attributed to the alternative dispute resolution which contributed 365 billion, voluntary disclosure initiatives, and close monitoring of the memorandums of understanding for installment payments and other enforcement mechanisms. Altogether, we are able to collect slightly over a trillion from these initiatives. The other intervention that is beginning to pay off is the deployment of technology solutions, namely the digital tracking solution, the electronic physical rec receipting and invoicing system, in short referred to as IFRIS. These boosted the performance of revenue. The DTS contribution uh, brought a growth of about 16.9% in excise duty collection uh, by aiding enforcement and tracking of locally manufactured and imported goods. IFRIS contributed to a growth of 15.7% in VAT collections through relaying of real-time data of the taxpayer transactions to URIA. Now, these two technologies are both in the initial stages. We've just rolled out, and not all our taxpayers, and we are yet to deploy a number of enforcement measures. But in spite of the early stages of this deployment, it is beginning to show positive impact uh, on revenue collection. Further, the tax administration front uh, also contributed to this growth. And the quick things like the quick response in revamping our online services immediately at the heat of COVID-19, most of our payment services, our filing systems, uh, we are able to continue online, even our tax tax education campaign on programs like CACASA uh, continued online. We recently launched our contact center, which is a modern one, with toll-free lines, and I pray that those toll-free lines are projected, where our taxpayers can, richly, can easily reach us and ask any questions and be provided with any information that they need. But we have also tried to improve our speeds in clearance of refunds, 
it is work ongoing. We know that we can do better, and indeed we shall do better. We have introduced a bonded warehouse information management system to automate the processes there. We are trying to simplify our processes like TIN application, automation of withholding tax exemption, and tax clearance certificates. All these services, we've put them online, and we are constantly working on improving them so as to ease, uh, uh, to ease the activity of doing business and paying taxes for all our taxpayers. Those are the toll-free lines. Please take note of them. They are monitored lines. They have professional people to handle you well. So don't hesitate to call or to reach us on any of those lines. And it's work ongoing. We will also automate all our other channels of communication, email, uh, social media, so that we are able to, be, to serve you better and to respond to you faster. Customs revenues uh, collections also grew by 16.4%, mainly due to the growth in imports, which registered a growth of 37.38% during the financial year 2020-2021, compared to the year before. It should be noted that only 23% of our total imports are dutable. The other 77% is duty free. Therefore, uh, these are the factors that contributed towards the customs uh, performance. And of course, the global reopening uh, of the supply chains when the COVID-19 pandemic kind of slowed down. New tax administration measures. Those that were announced in the budget speech of the financial year 2020-2021, including IFRIS, DTS, CANAS, debt recovery, use of GPS, data analysis, among others, yielded uh, revenue of 1 trillion, 111 billion. This was against a target of 448 billion, and therefore a performance of 202.7%. While new tax policies implemented in the financial year 2020-2021 yielded a net revenue of 260.35 billion, and the measures were majorly under income tax, local excise duty, VAT, and customs. But as we all remember, most of these measures came into force towards the end of the year uh, 2020. On the other hand, the shortfall in revenue is mainly attributed to the following, and it's largely one reason, which is the uh, adverse impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to slowdown in the activities of some of the key sectors already highlighted, uh, like education, accommodation, and food services, among others. It should be noted that PE, which is one of our largest uh, tax heads, as already indicated, registered a shortfall of 315 0.51 billion, mainly due to the scaling down of a number of employees by some organization. The corporate tax uh, collection also registered a shortfall of 239.9 billion, owing to losses made by the companies that were adversely affected by the pandemic. So tax administration intervention, like the audits, the taxpayer compliance service, the debt collection enforcement, were all slowed down during the month 
uh, of lockdown and shortly after that uh, because we had to observe the recommended SOPs and the consideration of the difficult time of our taxpayers. Therefore, uh, some key highlights, other key highlights for the performance of this financial year uh, are the, the expansion of the tax register despite the difficult circumstances uh, for, the year for the financial year 2020-2021, 189, 377 new taxpayers were added on our tax register. By the end of the financial year 2020-2021, our tax register had 1,783,493 taxpayers. In addition, Process improvements have taken place, especially in the process of registration, and I think I've already mentioned there is work ongoing, but we have been so far, we have so far been able to drop the rigorous uh, requirement of first downloading Excel sheets, feeding in your data, and then uploading them. We have replaced this process by web-enabled forms, so you'll be feeding in your data directly. And we are doing further simplification by integration with the NIRA system. So once you enter in your NIN and your date of birth, the data that is in the NIRA system should be uploaded automatically. And that is ongoing as we speak. I would encourage our taxpayers to try it out. But it is work ongoing. We will continue to simplify our processes, not only tax registration, but all the others, filing, assessment, objections, refunds. It is our duty and obligation to make the experience of our taxpayers memorable and enjoyable. So we will work on that and we believe we will be able to get there in a short time. The other highlights for this financial year were the improvements in customs and trade facilitation. URA has initiated the second phase of the custom, customs business systems enhancement. The aim of this is to harmonize customs procedures and systems to improve cross-border trade, collaboration between governments and agencies to reduce on the clearance times and to reduce the cost of doing business. One of the key projects there is the Uganda Electronic Single Window that has brought together all the government agencies under one portal so that our taxpayers can submit their applications once and they reach all the regulatory agencies uh, that manage our borders to ease uh, clearance of your goods. With the outbreak of COVID-19 in 2020, URA improved the regional electronic cargo tracking system, commonly referred to as RECS, by enabling our drivers, by enabling us to track the drivers. So we are able to add the driver tracking module and so far, we are able to monitor about 72% of the goods being processed from the port of Mombasa and also to monitor the truck drivers as well as their, conduct, as, as well as their contacts uh, in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Other enforcement interventions uh, during the financial year 2020-2021, the customs enforcement operations led to a recovery of 67.73 billion, coming out of 5,823 seizures. Most of these were of duteable goods, 4,843, and 980 were of non-duteable goods. 
the major offenses were under declaration, contributing 59.39%, misdeclaration 18.4%, and other uh, offenses like uh, temporary road violations, uh, transit violations, among others. Uh, litigation, a total of 259 cases were filed, of which 231 were civil and 28 criminal cases. During the financial year 2020-2021, 65 cases were ruled in favor of URA and uh, 20 in favor of the taxpayer. Um, in addition, we have introduced the alternative dispute resolution mechanism where cases are amicably resolved. And as I mentioned earlier, this co contributed 365 billion uh, in this financial year alone. Um, this helped to unlock revenue that had been held up in several uh, cases in court, especially with our large taxpayers. We intend to continue pursuing this approach in the financial year 2021-22, since it provides a win-win solution uh, for the taxpayers and URA. I will. Summary of the litigation cases. Can I ask that that summary is projected there as I recover my voice? Okay, that's the summary of the litigation cases that I've just read out. Um, Okay, let's look at the outlook and key initiatives that we intend to pursue in the new financial year 2021-22. First of all, we have a target approved by Parliament for the financial year of 2022, no, no, yes, for the year 2021-22, and the target is 22.425 trillion. Out of this, Uganda Revenue Authority has been tasked to mobilize 22.362, which is an increase of 3.100 trillion compared to the revenue collected in the past financial in the last financial year, 2020-21. This means the smaller component of about um, 61 or so uh, trillion will come from other MDAs that collect revenue directly to the consolidated fund. So for URA, we have an uphill task of improving our revenue collection by 3.1 trillion and we have already started running uh, towards this goal. Therefore, 
the new transformational journey set for us um, in order to boost our endeavors in revenue mobilization and in the efforts to try and free our country from donor dependence and encourage a healthy flow of investments and address the and address fairness and transparency in tax administration, we have agreed on the following strategic elements. Number one, the new vision for URA. Kindly project that so that everybody is able to read it for themselves. But we have set out that we will establish URA as a transformational revenue service for Uganda's economic independence. We are not just collecting revenue for the sake of it. We are collecting revenue with a target that one day, one time, we will help our country to be self-sufficient economically. And therefore, that is our vision. Our mission is to mobilize revenue for national development in a transparent and efficient manner. As we collect this revenue, we will ensure that we do it with integrity and transparency and efficiency. Now, for us to be able to effectively deliver on this mandate as spelled out in our new vision and mission, we must rigorously embrace the following values. The values are patriotism, integrity, professionalism, and you can add in agility and others. But core, these are the true values that we will measure ourselves against and will strive to achieve. In light of this journey, we call upon all our valued taxpayers to join us so that together we can work towards setting our country free from economic dependency. As I mentioned at the start of my speech, the 15th of September 2021, Uganda Revenue Authority will be marking its 30th birthday since the establishment of this institution by an act of parliament on the 15th of September 1991. This financial year, therefore, we will, we will utilize it as we celebrate our 30th anniversary as an opportunity to galvanize the new strategic direction on which we have set ourselves as an institution to deliver Uganda's economic independence. Some of the key initiatives that we'll be focusing on during the financial year 2021-22 include tax pay education and services. What do we mean by this? We are focusing on simplifying access to tax information through a number of platforms. This being one of them, television, but we will also have a comprehensive tax education program that we run on the radios, on the TVs, on the URA TV, as you heard at the beginning of this uh, press brief that we have, we have uh, set up a URA TV studio and we'll be launching it immediately after this briefing. And all other digital platforms like YouTube, webinars, and print media. We will also target our different taxpayers in their sectors and audiences so that we are able to reach them in a language they understand and with a simplified content that they can identify with. <coughs> uh, we have also, and I've already mentioned, uh, set up a modern contact center that will help us in extending this tax education effort and serving our taxpayers efficiently 
But also, today, we will launch the mobile tax office. These, we have started with two buses, fully equipped as URIA offices for registration, for tax education, for compliance initiatives, uh, for assessment, and everything that you would get from a tax uh, office. And this will help us to reach the far and distant places where we don't have a presence. So the plan is to have uh, four mobile offices, one to serve every region. And at this point, I would like to thank uh, the European Union uh, who funded this activity for the two buses that we'll be launching today. And we look forward to getting an additional two to cover all our regions so that wherever we do not have a presence, at least we have a scheduled visit uh, by these mobile offices to reach those towns and educate our taxpayers and help register them and clarify any other tax matter. We will continue in the efforts to translate and simplify our tax content. Uh, we are deliberate at making everybody enlightened about their obligation to tax, about their responsibility, about their rights, because we identify, we have identified this big gap between the taxpayers and the tax collectors is the source of our inability to go far in the effort of revenue collection. So we will deliberately bridge that gap and make sure there is sufficient knowledge on all uh, sides. We will uh, be deliberate on our stakeholder engagement efforts. We are implementing a stakeholder engagement strategy through consistent engagements to gather feedback on URA services and processes. We want to build trust relationships and exchange honest feedback with all our key taxpayers. And we have already identified them. Our Stakeholder number one are the taxpayers who contribute to the building of the nation by fulfilling the obligation of paying taxes. Our leaders at both the national and local levels, meaning uh, there is no leader that we would not reach in an effort to mobilize citizens to pay the taxes. Our tax agents and other inter intermediaries, uh, the accountants, the clearing agents, the tax agents, we will reach you and will engage. The media, who fortunately have been with us uh, all along and they are here with us today, we want you to pattern with us in the new journey of mobilizing enough revenue to develop the nation the professional firms, the academia, the security forces, the technology providers, and all other strategic partners that are ready to work this work with us. The other thing that we are focusing on is process improvements. As I mentioned, we are now reviewing our processes. We want to re-engineer them. We want to establish and remove those processes that add no value we want to automate most of our manual processes. We want to integrate our systems. And this will help us to break down the silos. The multiple approaches by Uganda Revenue Authority under the different departments, one day it is domestic taxes, another day it is customs, another day is tax investigations department must stop. We are wary. We know that this wears out our taxpayers. It wastes their productive time. And therefore, we are integrating our system so that we can approach you as one URA. And maybe one year, we visit you once or not at all because we have enough information on what you do 
here we just need your cooperation as we work together in serving you better. And ultimately, the reason we are simplifying these processes is to improve the experience of our taxpayers so that the duty of paying tax does not become a punishment or something that you don't look forward to. It becomes a seamless process that you can enjoy and can improve your willingness to comply. We are leveraging, we are lever we are leveraging technology and use of data. We are enhancing our IT capacity, infrastructure capacity, so that we have systems availability 24-7. We want to apologize for times when our taxpayers have tried to reach us in vanity, and we'll make sure that these incidences reduce or uh, almost come to extinction. Uh, we will improve the availability of our online systems. We'll enhance the data security so that your data will be safe with us. We are deepening our data analytics. So going forward, our decisions will be guided by data and research. There is no room for guesswork. But above all these things, we are focusing closely on corporate governance. And this, under this, we are addressing the issue of integrity. We believe that we have a sacred mandate that we must carry out with clean hands. So going forward, the emphasis on dealing with corruption and any form of lack of integrity will be decisive. We have already started and we will continue. We are building a new URA culture that enhances accountability and puts our clients at the center, a client-centered service offering so that we mind and we care about how our taxpayers feel when we are serving them. We are building the capacity of our staff to enhance professionalism and soon we should be the best in our field. Uh, and we are already doing well on this one. We are reviewing our structure, aligning our workforce. And as you know, at the end of last financial year, we ran out, we ran, we ran an advert of recruiting additional staff. Uh, had it not been for the disruption of this lockdown, we would be in some advanced stages. But this effort is on and we will carry it through to completion. Therefore, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank everybody that has made the collections of revenue in the financial year 2020-2021 successful. Let me start by thanking the government of the Republic of Uganda, first of all, for entrusting us with this sacred mandate and for supporting us in every way possible with the budget, with the guidance, with the supervision. And in this regard, I acknowledge and appreciate the support by the Minister of Finance during the financial year 2020-21 and going forward as our mother ministry. In a special way, I want to thank our taxpayers that have contributed the revenues that we have collected in this financial year. Despite the hard times their businesses are going through because of the COVID-19 pandemic. May God continue to bless you and your families and businesses and cause them to prosper. Let me also take this opportunity to thank uh, the staff of Uganda Revenue Authority who have dedicated their lives and time to this service and have collected this revenue. <clears throat> 
let me take this opportunity to call on all our stakeholders and all Ugandans to support URA in executing our mandate as we work towards the economic independence of our country. I would also like to thank the members of the media for their continued support in this noble journey and for, of, of helping us mobilize revenue for national development. Let me finally encourage all of us to continue observing custom revenue.